This is Lesson 3.3, Stretching and Compressing Graphs of Functions. In our previous sections, we focused mostly on translating and reflecting our functions. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll look, just like we did last year in Precalculus 11, we'll look at how we can stretch and compress them. First, we're going to start with um, vertically stretching and compressing, and then we'll look at how we can do that uh, in the horizontal axis. So what I want you to recall is uh, what we did in Precalc 11 last year with the function y is equal to ax squared. So we're not going to uh, translate this at all. We're just going to focus on the stretch and compressing. Well, this a value that we have right here will make us have a stretch or compress in the vertical y-axis. So we'll say uh, vertically uh, stretched or compressed. Okay, and then later on in the, in the lesson, we'll look at the horizontal axis. So specifically vertically right here. Uh, the easiest way to uh, take a look at this is let's go and graph our original function, y equals x squared. And then we'll see how um, our graph is going to change when we put a 2 or a 1 half in front of it. All right? So the graph of y equals x squared has our ordered pair at 0, 0. So let's put that right there. If you put in 1 and square it, you have 1. If you put in 2 and square it, you have 4. So if you're remembering this, I called it a step pattern last year in grade 11, over 3, up 9. And so roughly, we'll get a function that looks like so. So we're going to compare everything to this red function that we have right here. So I'll circle that so you know that that's the red function. Now, this blue function right here, we're going to do uh, it in blue. So it says y is equal to 2x squared. Well, when our a value, so when a is greater than 1 or when a is less than negative 1, what you're going to have is you're going to have something that has been stretched. Okay, So a is greater than 1. Normally it's going to be uh, integers right here, but uh, 2 is definitely greater than 1. Uh, if it w a was equal to negative 2, it would be the exact same, only of course the negative would make it uh, be reflected. So to graph this, all the points in the y-axis, if you will, are going to be stretched by a factor of 2, so we just multiply by 2. So that point that is at over 1, up 1 is actually going to be at over 1, up 2, and 2. This one that's at 4 is actually going to be at 8. So we'll see that we get a function that looks approximately like this. Okay. So we call it stretch because it's almost like someone took the function and, uh, and pulled it upwards, if you will. They've stretched it in the, uh, in the vertical axis. Well, you can probably imagine where this next one's going right here. Uh, let's do it in uh, green right here. If you take this function, we are trying to figure out uh, what's going to happen with this. Well, we can see that our a value does not fall into these categories. Our a is less than 1 and greater than negative 1, so it's going to be compressed. I always like to think of compression as though someone sat on my quadratic. So you're going to see that our green graph should fall somewhere in this region right here. So go back to our original function. We went over 1, up 1, but this is actually going to be over 1, up a half. And over 2, up 4 is going to be up 2. Over 3, up 9, a little bit tougher, is going to be up 4 and a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. And because you have enough space, we have to keep putting points on our uh, grid right here. Over 1, 2, 3, 4 normally is up 16, right? Because 4 squared is 16. Half of 16, though, is going to be 8. And so we'll do the same thing on this side. So we had a half, we had 2, we had 4 and a half, and we have 8. And so we have our function like so. Okay? So the last thing I want to leave you with here is that notice how our ordered pairs have changed. The x coordinates have stayed the same. So if you look at these coordinates right here, if we refer to our, um, our, our x value being 1, we have the ordered pair for original function of 1, 1. So I could write that as our red one has at 1, 1. And then our blue one, if you take a look at it, it was at 1, 2. And our green one was at 1 and then 1 half. Well, that is all according to whatever a value you have right here. So our points have just been stretched or compressed, but only the y values right here have changed. Okay? So let's take a look at the rule in general down here. And so the rule in general right here, what we can say is that when a is between 1 and 0, we're going to have a compression. We just looked at that. When a is greater than 1, or when a is this absolute value means uh, it can also be less than 1, we're going to have a vertical stretch. Okay? And then the last thing, and we really explored this in uh, section 3.2, but of course when a is less than 0, when a is negative, then we're going to have a reflection. Okay? So that's what we just covered. Let's try a couple of examples, and then we'll take a look at uh, how to deal with uh, stretches and compression in the uh, horizontal direction. Example 1 states, here's the graph of y is equal to f of x. Sketch the graph of y is equal to 1 quarter f of x, and state the domain and range of both functions. So, 
what do we know about all the ordered pairs? Well, all of these ordered pairs are going to get quartered, but only the y coordinates of it. So if you take a look, notice how these are going up by increments of 2 in both axes. So this ordered pair right here that looks like it's at 1, 1 is actually at 2, 2. Well, that ordered pair that's at 2, 2 is going to stay 2 in the x direction, but then we're going to take the y value of 2 and we're going to quarter it, which will give us 1 half. So it would actually go kind of right here. It's tough to do. All right, so even though that doesn't look like 1 half, that's where it would actually be approximately. Now, this point right here that's at 4 would actually be down here at what's a quarter of 4? It would actually be at 1. Okay, and if you're wondering why that's not there, it's because these are going up by increments of 2. All right? This one that's at 6 is a little bit tough to do. So if you have ones like that that are a little bit tougher to do, you can just do uh, ones that are a little bit easier. This one at 8, that's easy to do. Uh, if you take 8 and multiply it by our leading coefficient, our a value of 1 quarter, we have 2. Okay, so that's what that would look like in that direction. This one would look approximately like so, and so we can go and graph our function. Our function would look approximately like so, and like so. So notice that because we have a value that this a is less than 1 and greater than negative 1, we are going to have a compression. Okay. Next, the last thing we need to do in this function, uh, or in this question, is take a look at the domain and range. So the domain and range of this, we have our original function, which is y is equal to f of x, and we have our new function, which is y is equal to 1 quarter f of x. Well, how has the domain and range for these functions changed? Well, I'll put domain here and range here. So if we take a look at our original function right here, for my domain, it's going infinitely to the left and to the right, so we have all values of x. x can be anything. Well, has that changed now that we have changed our a value? You know it hasn't. It's still doing the same thing. So we'll say that x is a member of the reals. It is the same, if you want to write that in brackets. Okay. Next thing we need to look at is uh, the range, though. Has the range changed at all? Well, if our original function right here, we'd say that y had to be greater than or equal to 0. Notice that our smallest value we have here is at 0. Everything is the same. Nothing's changed for this one. y is also greater than 0. It's just the same. Okay, so relatively straightforward, even though this function right here was not a quadratic, it was an absolute value function, I think you can probably agree that it really follows uh, all the same principles as a quadratic uh, would have. So even if we had a cubic function um, that looks kind of maybe a little bit more complicated, all you would do is take and keep the x values the same, and in this case you would quarter the y values. So now that we've taken a look at uh, vertical stretches and compressions, let's take a look at how we can do the same in this horizontal direction right here. All right. So first what I want you to consider is the function y is equal to x cubed. Okay? So let's go and graph that original function. So if you were to put in 0 for x, 0 cubed is just 0, so we have that ordered pair at 0, 0. If you put in 1, 1 cubed is just 1. And this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. If you put in 2, 2 cubed is actually going to give you 8, like so. Uh, 3 cubed would be, of course, 27, but you can't fit that on our graph. And so we would do the same thing in a negative direction, like so, and like so. And so approximately, and this is just kind of a sketch right here, you would get a function that looks ballpark, something like that. Now, my question is, if we want to move something in the horizontal direction, um, how would we do that? So let's look at, um, if we manipulated the value for x that we put in. So I'll do this one in, uh, in pink here. So let's say we were to go and sub 2x in for x. Okay, so this 2x is going to go in for that x. So we'd have the function y is equal to 2x cubed like so. Now, what I want you to understand is that this function actually ends up becoming 8x cubed, right? Because 2 cubed is uh, 8, and then x cubed is just x cubed. Well, take a look at how this function would change. So, uh, the function is this, y is equal to 8x squared. Let's go and graph it. It would still have this same ordered pair at 0, 0. If you put in 1, though, 1 cubed is 1, and then 1 times 8 is 8. So this point is now right here. Right? Essentially what's happened is this point has gone up by 8. So you'd have a graph that would look, the same point would be down here at 8. You have a graph that looks like this. Okay, great. Now, let's do something different. Instead of putting it in 2, let's kind of put in the uh, reciprocal of 2. And so we'll do this with the blue function. Let's sub in uh, 1 half x for x. So in this case, we'd have y is equal to 1 half x, and then we're going to cube that. And so 1 half cubed, you cube the 1, you get 1, and you cube the 2, and you get 8. 1 eighth x cubed. Okay. So this one is going to be kind of interesting, because what you would end, end up doing right here is you'd go over 1. Instead of going up 1, you'd actually go up an 8. So that's going to be very, very small, right down there, let's say. 
okay? What is an eighth of uh, eight right there? It would just be at one, like so. So you'd have that ordered pair there, that ordered pair there, that ordered pair there, and that ordered pair like so. Okay. Now, if you were to go over a couple more, um, 3, 3 cubed is 27, 27 over 8 is tough to graph, but the interesting one is if you go up 1, 2, sorry, if you go over 1, 2, 3, 4 here, 4 cubed is actually 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, but then what is 1 eighth of 64? It's at 8 right here, okay? And so hopefully you'll see something kind of happen here in the horizontal direction. Okay, so we'd have a cubic function that looks like that. What I'm hoping that you'll notice is these ordered pairs. So let me highlight our original function. The original function, this ordered pair right here, was at 2, 8. And when I put a 2 value in here, what ended up happening in terms of the horizontal direction? Well, it got halved. That value x is now actually at 1, 8. And what happened for the blue function when I put in a 1 half? Well, what you can see is that this has actually been multiplied by 2. So at this point right here is at 4, 8. So the outcome that I'm trying to get you to understand is that we multiply something by the reciprocal if you want to figure out how it's going to be moved in the horizontal direction. So do you see how our value in here was 2? Well, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half, so this x value actually got halved. And if you take a look at this, it was 1 half was the value that we put in for x. Well, it's the reciprocal of 1 half is 2, and so if you take a look, this 2 value right here actually got doubled. Okay? And in general, let's go and take a look at the rule. That's uh, what we see right here. Okay, so again, I kind of like to think of the opposite in terms of the horizontal direction. If you see something that has been tripled, you're actually going to take the x value and um, take a third of it. Or if you see, th see something that's, uh, there's a one quarter in front, we're actually going to take the x value and multiply it by a factor of four. All right, let's start uh, looking at a couple examples here. Example two states, here's the graph of y is equal to g of x. Sketch the graph of y is equal to g of 0.5x, then state the domain and range of both of the functions. So what do we know about this 0.5 right here? Well, we can say that that 0.5 is going to have a horizontal stretch. Remember, we'll take the reciprocal of 1 half, so it would be a horizontal stretch of actually 2, because 1 divided by 0.5 actually gives us 2. That's the reciprocal of 0.5. If you think of that, it might be easier for you to think of that function of y is equal to g of uh, 1 half of x. Hopefully that, uh, that helps you a bit. So what we're going to have here is all of these ordered pairs right here that we have, the x coordinate of it is going to be um, basically multiplied by 2. Okay, so I'll graph this one. Let's do it in pink this time. So let's start with this point right here. So this point, they're going uh, by increments of 2, so that point is actually at negative 3, and so therefore I would have to take it to 6. Okay, negative 6 right there. This one looks to be, because we're going over by 1, this one is at a negative 1. And so negative 1 times a horizontal stretch of uh, 2 would put me at 2. This one right here that's at 3 would be at 6. And lastly, this one right here that's at 4 would actually be way over here at 8. And so we'd have a function that looks something like so. Okay. Finally, let's deal with our domain and range. So we have our domain and range. We have our original function, y is equal to g of x. We have our new function y is equal to g of 0.5x. And what do we have? Well, domain. Uh, this graph clearly does not go infinitely left and right, so we've got to be a little bit more precise. Uh, what can we see about our x values? Well, the most positive x value we have is 4, and the most negative one we have is negative 3. So x has to be less than or equal to 4, and greater than or equal to negative 3. And how has that changed? Well, it definitely, the, uh, the domain has changed. Uh, the domain now has been multiplied by a factor of 2. So if this is correct, this point right here that was at 4 should theoretically be at 8, and lo and behold, it is. And this one that's at negative 6, or sorry, negative 3 right here is going to be at negative 6. Okay, so that negative 6 value. Those are my x coordinates for the, uh, or my x values for the domain. The range now. Uh, has the graph changed at all in terms of the, uh, the y values that we had? Well, we had a y value here that was at, uh, looks to be at 5 and it went down to negative 2. So we would say that y is between 5 and negative 2. And because we're doing horizontal um, compressions and stretches here, uh, we don't have to worry about our y's. Our y's should stay the same. Okay, so we have the same right here. Lastly, let's go and uh, take a look at what would happen if we combined uh, transformations. And so we combine transformations, it's just kind of like what you expect. Uh, we're just going to be moving it in, in both the, uh, the horizontal and the vertical direction. So let's look at an example like this. 
Example 3 states here is the graph of y is equal to f of x. Sketch the graph of y is equal to 4 f of negative 2x, then state the domain and range of each function. Okay, so we have to do two different things right here. So let me just write down the function one more time so that we can break this up a little bit more clearly. Let's uh, talk about what the 4 and what the negative 2 are going to do. Well, this 4 value is going to do, of course, a vertical stretch. of factor 4, right? We don't have to worry about taking the reciprocal of that one, but in the horizontal direction right here, we do. In this case, we have a value of negative 2, and since that is going to be less than negative 1, we know that it's going to be a horizontal compression. And we take the reciprocal of that. The reciprocal of negative 2 is going to give me negative 1 half. Okay? So let's do something different here and take a look at our, uh, our ordered pairs. So if we have our function y is equal to f of x right here, and we have our new function y is equal to 4 f of negative 2x, let's take a look at some of our ordered pairs. So the first ordered pair that I want to deal with is let's talk about this one at negative 2, 0. Okay? So negative 2, 0, we're going to take the x coordinate right here, right, and we're going to multiply it by a factor of negative 1 half. So that's going to give me the ordered pair 1. And if we take our y coordinate, we're going to multiply it by a factor of 4, but that doesn't change anything, so we just have 1, 0. Okay? Now let's take a look at another order pair that's nice. Uh, we have a nice value right here. I say nice, we call that a lattice point. Um, that's the ordered pair, what's it at? Negative 1, 1. So negative 1, 1. Now this one's going to change a little bit more. So the x coordinate is going to be multiplied by a factor of negative 1 half. So we multiply that by negative 1 half, and we get positive 0.5. And then the y value is going to be stretched by 4 right here. Okay, and let's look at maybe one or two more. Another nice ordered pair we have is this point right here at 2, 2. So we take our x coordinate, it's multiplied, and it's going to be compressed by a factor of negative 1 half. So this is going to make me a negative 1. Then we take our 2, and we're going to stretch it by a factor of 4. So it gets multiplied by 4 to give you 1 eighth. And then uh, the last point that we have that's kind of nice is this point at 7, 3. And it's a little bit tougher uh, to do here because 7 times negative 1 half will give you a decimal. So you can write it as negative 7 over 2 or negative 3.5, whatever you like. And then 3, you're going to multiply by a factor of 4. My guess is we're not going to be able to graph that. So um, this one, what I'm going to do is let's graph our new function right here in terms of uh, the screen color. So this point that was at negative 2, 0 is actually going to be at 1, 0. So that's way over here. Okay. This point that was at uh, negative 1, 1 is actually going to be at 0.5 and 4, so that's way up here. And the next points, right, if you were to imagine where they'd be, this one would be at negative 1 and then way up here at 8, and then negative 3.5 and way up here at 12. So the best that I can do to fit on this little grid right here would be that we would have a function that would look approximately like so. Okay. So uh, the last thing uh, we were asked to do in this question is let's talk about the, uh, the domain and range. So we'll do this uh, super quick. We have y is equal to f of x. Our new function y is equal to 4 f of negative 2x, like so. We have our domain and we have our range. Well, the x values for original function, my domain, x had to be greater than or equal to negative 2. All right. And how is that changed for our other function? Well, our other function, we have values that are at 1, and they have to be less than that. They're going the other direction, less than or equal to 1. Okay. How about the range? Well, the y values. What's the uh, most uh, or the smallest y value you have? It's the same for both the functions. Y has to be greater than or equal to zero, and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So that uh, concludes this lesson. Um, my hope is, is that you understand uh, how to deal with a uh, value right here, how to determine if it is being uh, stretched or compressed. And notice that this is going to change our y coordinate, and this one right here is going to change our x coordinate, uh, with the one exception that this is going to be the reciprocal of it in terms of moving it in the horizontal direction, whereas this one was the uh, vertical direction. All right, that concludes this lesson.